Woo! Celebration! Yeah, I'll be with you in a moment. One moment. All right. Hey, everybody. Just putting your music together for you so that you're going to be able to follow along with me. Let me take care of this action and I'll be good to go. Whoops. Just a little bit like this. Let me make this a little bit dope. God damn it. There. Uh, let me take the brightness down slightly here. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> Welcome, everyone. So today I'm going to start working on uh, my scales from the top, C major, so that you can get together with me and practice if you like. Um, I like. So I'm going to. Um, really what we're going to be working on is uh, adding ease, <clears throat> ease and evenness to your technique. Uh, paying a lot, of tech, uh, a lot of attention to the sound while we do technical stuff. Making all of your technical issues more of a musical idea uh, is what the idea is. So, I've already done the super boring parts of my playing this morning. I've done my long tones already, but I'm going to show you a little bit of a warm-up just so we can get going together. So we can feel good about where we're at. Got somewhat of a bright read on today, but I'm okay with that. We're just practicing, right? All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to like play a, a few twelfths, which on the clarinet means squeezing a key down. So if I play a regular note like a C that's just got three fingers, it sounds like this. If I add this key on the back, this is called the register key right here. Then I get a twelfth, like this. All right. And when I'm doing that, I'm not I'm not popping my register key. Okay, I'm just giving it a little squeeze. Squeeze it. See how see how little squeezing it takes. All it needs is that much venting to open it up. So I'm not even concerned about it. Very very easy. So just back and forth a few times to let your body get used to blowing through the horn, feeling these two different registers of your instrument, and squeezing like a lemon, not popping. easy, really listening for a really beautiful ring on the top note. The, the top note should have should have a slight brilliance to it that's lovely. So I'm going to go D and A, same thing, just squeezing my register too, right? Just giving it that little, little bit of love. Not a pop, just a squeeze. we go the 
more challenge there's going to be to make a really pure top note. And I'm going to talk about that in one second. E and B and F and C are the last bits. top one's difficult. Well, there are several things happening on the inside of your mouth while you play the clarinet. And while you're playing down in this low register, your, your voicing or the way that you that your mouth feels on the inside is it like it feels when you say the word of the syllable, ah. When you go to the doctor's office, they ask you to say ah because your tongue gets flat and low and relaxed in your mouth and they can kind of look all the way down your throat. But when you go <clears throat> when you go higher, you need to make the, the speed of the air go faster. And the only way to make the speed of something, the air coming out of your lungs is at roughly a constant rate. In order to make the air go faster, you have to make the aperture that it comes out of in your mouth smaller. Uh, like in a hose with a uh, with a trigger with a spigot or whatever, you can um, Water comes out in a, in, a, in, a, in a constant fashion, but if you make the hole that it comes out of smaller and smaller and smaller, sooner or later, you can cut steel with the same speed of water from the beginning. So how that happens in your mouth is you go from this, ah, <laughs> hey man, I'm in my own house. <laughs> I can't black you, I should have put a hole in, in a face mask. I would go, I do wear a face mask and gloves outside, uh, that's for sure. Um, so when I say the letter, instead of ah, I say e, what happens is that your tongue goes from low in your mouth to high in your mouth. So you have this aperture and then that aperture, and that makes the air move faster. So I'm going ah, e, ah, e in between like this. Now, if I didn't change the voicing, I would get something like this. which is not exactly what you want. So how you can learn to manipulate that is to try to add that multiphonic and then subtract the multiphonic from that note uh, on purpose. So like this, on high C. you can kind of manipulate that at will, the easier it is for your body internally to just recognize what it feels like to do it correctly. I don't really think about changing my voicing anymore at all. It does happen as it becomes a natural part of my muscle memory for making all of this stuff happen, okay? So I always like to do a little bit of long tone work at the very beginning of the day to make sure that uh, we are a little bit loose, have a little bit of a stretch, before we move into our scales, which we're going to do now. Now, here is the scale that we're going to look at today, C major. Uh, we're going to not worry about this last measure here, okay? So our range is from this bottom note, low E, to this top note, high F. <clears throat> we're going to work out that range a little bit kind of rudimentarily, but in the manner that I like to do. I set my metronome at 80. Okay, I've got the subdivision on, that is to say, eighth notes, one, two, three, and four, and one. The reason I put the subdivision on is because it allows me to check in with myself twice a beat, instead of once a beat, to make sure that my technique is even, easy, and lovely. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start on low E, the lowest note that I can start on my instrument, and I'm going to go two octaves up to another E, and then back down, all in the key of C major, no sharps, no flats. So from E to E sounds something like this. And then I'm going to go up step by 
high step in C major and do two octaves at a time. And what we're actually practicing were all of the modes in C major, but you don't need to really think about that. We're just going to go two octaves at a time within the key signature, okay? I'm going to put my metronome at 80, subdivision on, and I'm just going to go. Hold. At the end, I'm going to hold each note for four beats, take a two-beat breath, and go on the next one. So, here we go. One, two, for am I as perfectly even as I can be? Does the sound sound the same from the bottom to the top? How do I feel about blowing beautifully through my instrument? The technique will come, but right now I'm thinking about ease, evenness, evenness of tone, and just a beautiful thought all the way from top to bottom. Starting on A. So now I've worked through that entire range of that opening scale, two octaves at a time from low E to high F, and I feel pretty good. So now we're actually going to get started on this printed scale here. So I like to leave the last measure off, because fuck that. Uh, also, um, what I do is I go through four iterations of this. Uh, 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 sort of, I do two repeats. In one in one go, so I'm trying to get four iterations of the entire scale per breath as I start. Okay, so I set my metronome on on 100 beats per minute. I keep the subdivision of the eighth notes on because I want to stay as religious as possible about how how even I am. And I'm just going to play the scale that you see up here. If you want to join me, now's the time. I'll count you off, okay? I'll give you one for nothing. One. the beaten path of the way that this scale is printed, but not really. I just go up to F, down to E, up to F, down to E, and back to C. 
from the top to the bottom to the top to the bottom, back to the middle. Not so bad. Same thing. I do two, iter two breaths of each, okay? So we're going to do the same thing. Four iterations of this scale at 105 if I can make it. One. in my read here. Okay. I feel okay about that. Um, again, what I'm looking for is evenness, ease, and just sort of this unity of sound. Does it sound like the same instrument at the top as it does at the bottom? Do the breaks in the registers feel like non-breaks? For the most part, I feel okay about it. Um, so... I'm going to move on to 120 and take the subdivision off. We start to move into some tempo. I may have to replace this read second uh, soon, but we'll see. Okay, so here we go. 120 subdivision off now. Same idea. Ease, evenness. Not worried about the speed at all. Speed is going to come. One. So what I'm really trying to do is I'm absolutely not trying to rush the metronome at all. In fact, I'm trying to drag the metronome a little bit. If I can stay on the very, very backside of a full beat, that is to say, I want to fill every millisecond of every beat with the notes that I'm playing. In this case, four notes per beat. If I start to scrunch that up, every subsequent beat like the Doppler effect, it gets closer and closer. And by the time you realize it, you're, you're out of control and there's nothing musical about that. In fact, rushing is almost always amusical in every situation. So in order to truly gain control over the metronome and where you want to be with it, you want to sit as far back into the beat as possible. Almost drag the metronome. 120 again. I got five iterations this last time. I think I'll put five iterations back together again. Here we go. One. six. That's fine. Thanks for the follow. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to do, since we're on day one, we're not going to push the tempo quite as fast as we're going to push it later in the week, but we're still going to give us a little bit of a workout here. So my goal uh, is 140 beats per minute on day one. So here we are. Okay. It's a little bit of a clip. That's okay. If we've been working on everything right, this should not be a terrible problem in C major. As you get 
better and better, it will be easier and more even. But let's just go for this kind of easy tempo right now. This is 140. Having worked it up, we should still be even and easy. Let's try it. One. tempo about just picking your fingers up and putting them back down. It's not like, um, it's not rocket science. Okay. You build this beautiful column of air and then your fingers just kind of ride on that air. If without good air, you can't force the technique by itself without the air that you're putting through the instrument activates all of the technique that you have without beautiful airflow, without a thought about how you're going to do that. It's not going to work out. 140 again. Easy, even, beautiful sound. One. It's really weird. Let's do that again. something I give it a little retake there's no reason there's no reason to beat yourself up when you're in your own room there are enough people in this business who are going to beat you up you don't have to be one of them and usually we beat ourselves up the most and I certainly have been guilty of that in my life there's no profit in that one more time just for me <laughs> when I play the high notes, there's no real difference in my physical affect. I don't go up and reach for these high notes. There's no like, that ain't great. Okay. You want to subtract tension from your life, not add tension. That's why we're trying to work on all of this in such a relaxed, easy fashion. You start reaching for high notes, tension all the way. Keep your body really easy and even throughout. I should not give you a physical indication that I'm reaching for any high notes. Tension is a killer. 100%. Tension, anger, frustration, all of that. Killers. All right, this is a little harder read, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, now, I'm going to move into these arpeggios now. I leave this first note off because who gives a shit? All right. So we're going to go back to 100, and I'm going to put the subdivision on. <clears throat> now, one thing I should mention is that you notice that I don't, I'm not working with music here. I'm not looking at the music while, while I'm playing. And I think that's an important part of getting past the idea that scales are something to be afraid of or that are inherently difficult or boring. If you can get away from it and have all of this from memory, A, you know your, music, your, your instrument a lot better than you used to, and B, you just develop a confidence about any key that you're in because if you have it memorized, what's to stop you, okay? So we're going to add a little articulation in a second, but first we're just going to play this arpeggio, the second exercise that you see there, without that opening holding of the quarter note. 
So something like this. things here. Uh, one, I always finger this low E with my right hand. I figure I finger almost as much as I can with the same hand. So I, I, I use a lot of my right pinky all over the place. The reason that I do that is because if you use one hand, the information only comes from one side of your brain. If you use two hands, you've got to like sort of coordinate. I don't see any reason to add add levels of difficulty. So now I'm going to do a little slur to tongue to articulation, which is the most characteristic articulation for the clarinet. Uh, I move my metronome to 110. I'm going to go slur to tongue to tongue one, slur to tongue one, and then tongue two, slur two. I'm going to put all of those sort of back to back to sort of put myself through my paces. Subdivision off. Slur to tongue two. One. <laughs> as easy as everything else. You don't want to belabor your articulation, just bounce. All Everything bounces better with good air. Your tongue bounces better, your fingers bounce better. All right, here's our goal, easy goal for today, 120. And when you're doing this, uh, you shouldn't be thinking. You should be thinking. The more you can start to think about those three sixteenth notes moving towards the next beat rather than da 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 da, -da coming away from the previous beat instead of that ba da da ba da 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 ba da da da, just adds evenness all throughout. Same thing. One. one in for myself to remind me to not reach for those high notes. I, I tensed up a little bit. I want to stay <clears throat> I want to stay away from the high notes with my body. Uh, and it's okay again to retake these things in your own practice room if you're not happy. What are we talking about here? Okay. Now we're going to go on to this, this third exercise here. It's called the interrupted scale. Um, Pretty self-explanatory, but with the same subdivision going ba da da dee, ba da da dee, ba da da dee, we go ba ba da dee dee. That's what you, what you want to be thinking about. And you get when you do it evenly. You sort of want to have a wholesale rejiggering of like how you think about the evenness of your technique. Subdivision on. 
one. terrible so uh sometimes i'll end with a little bit of a ornament or a trill or a turn or something it just makes me happy so you just gotta let me do it same thing 120 we're moving it up 20 clicks just like every other time keeping the same idea even easy beautiful sound throughout concerned about day one being perfect perfect but I do want to create a really nice base for me to work off for the rest of the week so when I feel like something might not quite be straight in the terms of exactly where I want it to be I go ahead and I give myself that extra time that was an extra rep or two uh, it's always good to err on the side of too many reps rather than too few if I'm trying to do 10 reps sometimes and I can't remember whether, whether I've done 9 or 10, I do another one just in case because why not? Okay, so here we are on our last exercise here. Thirds, I'm going to do each repeat. So I'm going to give two, two of these and two of these for each tempo here. So, whoop, son of a bitch. So, um, yeah. You'll see. I'm not going to worry about any of this articulation. I dealt with that earlier. Subdivision on. Easy and even. Really, 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 really trying to be even here rather than fast.
pretty hard not to rush up there at the top. It's really like da dee da dee da dee da dee da to really keep all of that really even is difficult, actually. Okay, let's move on. Shall we? All right. Yes. All right. So this I do use music for. I do not have all of this memorized. Take a quick swab out of my horn here. Always through the bottom, not through the top, please. You have this beautiful little funnel, right? Use it, use it. Plus, I'll show you something else. Go! All right, there we go. So check, let's see. If we look inside the instrument here, let's see, can you see this? There's a little, they're kind of sharp edges here, like the very beveled edge of this is pretty sharp. So if I were to put my, my swab down this way a whole bunch, I'm going to end up dulling that very sharp edge. I don't want to do that at all. I don't want to make dull, it's like a, like water running over a rock. Eventually it's going to smooth it over. I don't want that. Any sort of difference that I make on the inside of my instrument is going to make my instrument worse and last for a shorter period of time. I'm not interested in that. And it messes with your intonation, and I'm definitely not interested in that. Okay. Okay, so these are some of my very, 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 very favorite exercises, and I, I call them my not-so-secret weapon, because every clarinet player has probably looked at these over the course of their lives, but I'm not sure that everybody still does them daily. In fact, I'm positive that most people don't do them daily, but for me, these are like my daily bread. These are uh, these take the ideas that I've started working on in my scales and starts to put them in a more musical connotation. Um, So these exercises are somewhat about technique, but also really about beautiful sound and the most classical approach to playing the instrument. So eventually this week, my goal is going to be to set my metronome at 60 and play, play these two pages back to back uh, at 60, which is somewhat of a challenge, but not crazy. Today, because it's day one, we're gonna do 50. We're going to leave the metronome on at 50 with the subdivision and play these. And the direction is, I know that it's in Russian, but uh, we will deal with that, right? Um, the direction is to play each line four times before coming to the final bar. And uh, I'm kind of religious about that, so I'm going to do it. Here's 50. Extremely relaxed for these initial ones with the 16th notes, but it will start to get somewhat athletic. It seems like the simplest exercise that you could possibly do. And in, 
I suppose on one level it is, but on the level of actually having to place your fingers exactly where you want without any breaks in the sound, that's not so easy, right? We make things as difficult as they necessarily need to be. Okay, this is why I work on this stuff in such an organized fashion. Number two. <laughs> These octave skips in the first two measures are things that, or the first measure, are things that I absolutely insist in Krebs on being legato. I could go. I don't know that that does anything for me, like, like as I play through the clarinet. So I'm going to keep it very, very, very long. Finish it out. Finish it out. Not. Or whatever. End. Finish the thought. Don't just stop playing. You got to finish it. Number three. people and I did when I was younger throw in a tongue in this exercise because there are a lot of larger intervals that you have to sort of blow through in a in a legato fashion but if you're doing it correctly you don't need to use the articulation what you really, really want to listen for is just the quality of these high notes <laughs> if you're listening for those quality of high notes the the musical area of your brain doesn't freak out about the intervals and it makes it much easier. Yes. Hi, Cece. Cece the Wonder Dog. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. Come, come, come. I know. I know. I know. Oh, yes. Oh, the front. This is my doggy. You say hi, Cece. Oh, hello. Hello, everyone. I know, I got work. I got work. Okay, so number three again, fully legato throughout, please. <laughs> over the break just getting this first finger down here in a, in a good good fashion and if, as long as you get this 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 first finger of the D down in a, in a timely fashion everything's going to work out for you so numero four O oh.
critical of myself, I definitely rushed the metronome that time. I'm going to really, 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 really try to keep it under control here. just a little bit. All right, number five, I do a couple of different ways. Number five, I do the first time somewhat staccato, second time very legato. So first time separated the notes, like so. Second iteration of this last two repeats, very, very, very legato. some more slightly more technical stuff same tempo I'm gonna now read sextuplets instead of 16th notes so we're moving the moving the not writ uh, moving the moving the note note speed faster gotta stay hydrated one two three one two three one two three one two three one and So those notes are somewhat high. You want to keep them as long as you can. And for that high G fingering here, I'm going C. And then for G, I use one, three, and then one, two in this. So it kind of jumps out pretty well, and it's also nicely in tune. I like that G a lot. Number seven. Kind of intervals, 
Traditionally, those are quite difficult in the clarinet of these. Okay, but the only way to really make those happen and to feel good is to just really listen to every one of those higher notes. The Gs, those, those pedal notes will take care of themselves, but if you really hear... That's giving a musical approach to a technical problem, which really gets into my overarching theme of practicing. Technical problems have musical solutions. All right, we're moving on. Numero 80. So now we finally move into 30 seconds. Four notes per subdivided beat. Really going to try to drag the metronome, try to use every bit of the subdivision. One. Here for these B's, I'm absolutely just using my right pinky. I'm not involving my left hand at all here. All right hand. Same thing. to get a little frustrated there for a moment but then you got to collect yourself and go on you can't allow yourself to dwell on frustration it's not going to lead to anything give yourself a break take a moment chill out take it again and if you can't do it then then you got to start working on it in a different fashion because you don't know it yet okay all right all right turn the page No, no, no. There. All right. So we're not going to worry about these last two lines because that's A minor. Okay. So we're going to go these last four up through number 12. Okay. Same tempo at 50 with the subdivision on. Again, we're going to move up to 60 by the end of these five days. But right now, easy at 50. Mm, one. Sorry, girl. I'm from 
were surprised at how well that last bit went with my dog trying to get in the whole time. Cece, out. Come on. Or in. Either way, I'm not going to keep doing this for you, okay? I'm almost done. Number 10, please. Number 10. Same idea. exercises that's actually easier to do faster um, so holding it back like that is actually pretty difficult for me but for day one I'll take it now we're going to move the tempo down but we're going to keep the subdivision the same I'm at 34 in triplets instead of it's the same tempo just a different subdivision because we're in three here one two <laughs> fake fingering that I use the entire time is that D right there. I do that open. So instead of or I go so it's a little not quite in the same intonation but you can fake it a little bit so it does as long as you don't really blow like nobody's ever going to know Just gotta make it not a big deal. I'm gonna leave it on the same tempo for the last one, number 12. A little articulation, a little whatever. One. some pop and some shortness in my articulation here. I'm really listening for how long those notes are, oddly enough. These notes especially. You know, just remember the definition of staccato is separated, not short. Almost done. Thank you. 
not bad for day one. It takes about an hour. If I didn't talk through it, it would probably take me closer to 40, 45 minutes, which is a perfect amount of time to spend that kind of love on yourself to make the rest of your day practice-wise, health-wise, energy and mentality-wise a much smoother and easier day for you, okay? I'll be back later to do a little bit of actual actual stuff. Why don't I play something? I end up I end, I end a lot of these just by playing this because it makes me feel good. So here's a little Schubert, eh? And then I'm out. see you guys tomorrow. I really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whoops. And I want to stop broadcasting.